everyone and welcome to the final episode of Singapore Symphony Orchestra's Musical Soundbites Enigma Variations. Conductor Jessica here to complete our musical journey of all 14 of Elgar's magnificent variations performed by the marvellous musicians from the Singapore Symphony Orchestra. Now if you joined us for the first three episodes, You'll remember that we've already learnt about three of four sections of Elgar's Symphony Orchestra. We started learning about the string family in episode one, which has the violins, violas, the cellos and the double basses. Then we moved on to the woodwind section with our piccolo and flute, the oboe and clarinets, bassoon and the big contra bassoon. And last week, of course, featured our fabulous brass. From our French horns to our shiny trumpets, the sliding trombones and the tuba. Do you know which section of the orchestra is missing? Let me give you a clue. It can be very loud and very rhythmic. That's right, it's our percussion section. There are so many different percussion instruments that play in orchestras. Some of the instruments we hit to make the sound, some we shake or even scrape. Some percussion instruments we call tuned percussion, like a marimba or a glockenspiel, which have the notes set out like a piano keyboard, so they can play melodies and harmonies and tunes. We also have untuned percussion, which are those that give us the great driving rhythms from things like the snare drum or the bass drum. The percussion instruments that Elgar chose to write for this piece are the timpani, the side drum or snare drum, the triangle, a bass drum and cymbals. So they range a lot in their size and sound from the big timpani to the little triangle. Now being our final episode, I thought it would be fun to invite my very talented friend Tim to play us some of his favourite percussion instruments. Some of the percussion instruments are so big that I thought I would visit Tim in his studio to have a look. Welcome Tim to Musical Soundbites. Thank you Jess and hi everyone. Now Tim gets to play lots of different percussion instruments. Sometimes the percussions are very busy running from one end of the section to the other and you've actually played with the Singapore Symphony Orchestra before. Oh yes, it was so much fun. The Singapore Symphony, wonderful music making and lovely people in a great venue. Well, we've been listening to the Singapore Symphony perform Elgar's Nick Variations uh, this month and one of the pieces starts particularly with a very big tip line. Let's have a listen to the timpani. Wow, what an incredible sound that was. Tim, I can see that the timpani are all very different size and they also have a different pitch. Can you tell us about that? That's right. The small ones make the highest pitches ones make the lowest pitches. And you can also change the pitch on the drums. So it's a little bit similar to the other sections that we learned about, like the piccolo which makes the highest pitches and the contra bassoon makes the lower ones and the violin and the double bass. Very mm. similar. Yeah. Fantastic. And tell us about your special timpani sticks. These are specially made for these timpani drums. The shafts are made of bamboo and the tops are made of felt, all sewn together. Oh, and take a good look, we'll be drawing those a little bit later when we learn a little bit more about the timpani. Now, I've been looking over here, Tim. Um, this is another instrument that Elgar chose to, to write in the Enigma Variations. Here we have the snare drum. Let's hear what the snare drum sounds like. Hear a little rattle. How does it make that sound? That's right. It has some strings on the bottom, a snare, which makes that special military sound. And without the snare on. And I'm looking at your uh, sticks here. We don't have any like the big felt mallets that we used on the timpani. They don't have that at the end anymore. No, they've just got tiny little wooden tips to make the drum sound. And a little bit later when we listen to one of the variations and we talk about the big ship liner coming on, these are the sticks that they use on the edge to make the sort of sound. Yeah. To make the sound of an ocean liner. Yeah, very, very interesting. 
Now I can see here, oh let's look at this big one, this looks fantastic. This is our bass drum. Yes, it makes a very low sound because it's so big. fantastic instrument and you can see how a lot of the instruments that we've looked at we've talked about how the sound resonates from inside and you can hear how that does that with this drum here and then of course we have these fantastic cymbals so that's how we can play it with one and what happens if we put the two together Fantastic instruments. And then I think we only have one final one to do, but it's a very important one. It's a beautiful triangle and it makes a high tinkly sound. Beautiful. You can listen out for the triangle in today's variations uh, during the episode. And I think that we're just going to have one final ding, which will send me back to my room so we can get on with our variations for today. What do you think, Tim? That sounds great. Are you ready? It's a Here special ding for you. <laughs> what a fantastic way to end our guest musician spot for this series. Now we are well and truly ready to hear the last three variations by Elgar. Unlike the last variation of episode three, which is full of lots of loud percussion, our first movement today has only one bar written for the timpani. The piece starts with a very expressive solo played by a cello. The other lower strings join in, and then in the 10th bar, the timpani plays the note D as a trill with a note that starts very softly and then gradually crescendos to get louder and then back to soft again. Let's try that together in the air. Soft, nice and loud, and then back to soft. Elgar wrote the 12th variation for his friend Basil, who was a cellist who enjoyed playing chamber music with Elgar. It's no wonder that Elgar chose to start the music with such a beautiful cello solo. I'm gonna see if I can draw a timpani now while I listen. Perhaps you can join me too. Whenever I conduct the second last variation, I always have this picture in my head that I think Elgar may have been thinking about too when he composed this movement. The piece starts with a very pleasant melody in the clarinet, supported by the string section, which rises and falls around it. Then we hear our flute and oboe join in before the music comes to a sudden quiet and we hear our side drum, also known as a snare drum, play very, very quietly on the very side of the drum with sticks to make this noise. I'll show you on my container. It sounds a little bit like the distant clicking of a large ship's engine. Then over the top, we hear the clarinet sneaky in oh so quietly, quoting from a motive from another composer's piece. Mendelssohn's Calm Sea and Prosperous Voyage. Before our timpani repeats a little pattern of two notes in the last six bars. So it sounds like the ship is getting closer. Can you picture a big ship way off in the distance sailing in the ocean? 
I actually found a model of an old ship that my granddad made. Can you see it here? I thought that I'd have a go at drawing a picture of a ship in the ocean while I listened to the music. What will you draw while you listen? I'm sure there are some brilliant pictures of majestic ships sailing the high seas. That brings us to the very final movement from Elgar's Enigma Variations. And it's a big one. It's the grand finale. And who did Elgar choose to write this one for? Well, it's someone that you know a little bit about. We think Elgar wrote it to himself because he put his initials EDU next to the title. That was his nickname. It's in this movement that we hear the whole orchestra and all their sections play at their finest. The strings and woodwind explore fast, exciting scales, as well as beautiful, rich melodies. The brass play proud fanfares and the percussion keep the music extra exciting with their big rolls and their crashes. If you listen carefully, you might be able to hear a few of the motives that we heard in previous variations. He does a very good job of weaving them in and out of the finale as a little reminder of all the music that he wrote in this magnificent work before. I thought it would be fun to have a little play along with this movement. So while we listen, I'm going to make a couple of my own percussion instruments just out of things that I have found around my house. You might have some good ideas too.
Well, that brings us to the end of our journey, listening to Elgar's Enigma Variations and learning a little bit about the four sections of the symphony orchestra. Which was your favourite section? Was it the strings, the woodwind, the brass or percussion? Perhaps you had an instrument that you liked the best. If you want to revisit any of these episodes, just head to SSO's Facebook or YouTube page where you'll find all four episodes, including number two, which has the music for our short story contest. Don't forget, you can still enter the short story contest by writing a story that you think would go well with the music from variation number seven, Troit. You can just send your story to outreach at sso.org.sg anytime before the 11th of April. You can also send your fantastic pictures or questions to that email address. Thanks, of course, goes to the brilliant musicians at the Singapore Symphony Orchestra for their beautiful performance. <laughs> and to all of you for joining me on this journey of musical sound bites. Bye.